Ah, the good old days of Saturday morning cartoons. Do you remember waking up early, grabbing a big bowl of cereal and plopping down in front of the TV to catch your favorite shows? Among the lineup, Beetlejuice the animated series often stood out like a vibrant spooky gem. What was it about Beetlejuice that captured our imaginations as kids? Was it his wild, unruly hair and that iconic striped suit? Or maybe it was Lydia with her gothic attire and unwavering friendship with a ghostly troublemaker? Do you recall the quirky, surreal landscapes of the neither world? Where anything seemed possible and the ordinary was always turned on its head? For me, watching Beetlejuice was an adventure into a realm where the macabre and the whimsical danced together in perfect harmony. I used to be mesmerized by the imaginative settings and the way each episode felt like a mini Tim Burton masterpiece. The show's eerie yet playful music, composed by the brilliant Danny Elfman, still rings in my ears as a nostalgic symphony of childhood. It's incredible how a cartoon about a mischievous ghost and his human friend could be so endearing and unforgettable. So let's further explore the animated series adaptation of Beetlejuice. Genesis and Development The animated series Beetlejuice sprang to life from the resounding success of Tim Burton's 1988 cinematic masterpiece. The film, with its quirky charm and dark humor, left audiences clamoring for more of the ghostly antics. We come for your daughter, Chuck. Recognizing this, the creative minds behind the original film decided to transpose the eccentric universe into an animated format, catering to a younger demographic while retaining the essence that made the movie a hit. Premiering on ABC in 1989, the series was a testament to the enduring appeal of its characters and the imaginative world they inhabited. Tim Burton, the visionary director, played an instrumental role in shaping the series, ensuring it echoed the whimsical, gothic undertones of the movie. It's as if he took the spectral essence of the film, infused it with animated brilliance, and conjured a show that could enthrall both children and adults alike. I'm ready to party! Plot and Setting The animated series carved its own niche by emphasizing the unique friendship between Beetlejuice and Lydia Dietz. Envision having a spectral companion who thrives on mischief and revels in the grotesque. What a recipe for perpetual adventures. The storyline oscillates between the mundane human world and the fantastical neither world, a surreal realm replete with outlandish creatures and bizarre locales. How'd you get in? How do you like that? 65 episodes and I never knew I had a back door. Picture the neither world as a place where the extraordinary is the norm and the ordinary is a foreign concept. Lydia, a goth teenager with a penchant for the macabre, frequently invokes Beetlejuice by uttering his name. This incantation unleashes a whirlwind of escapades and shenanigans, leaving one to ponder if Lydia ever considers, perhaps today I'll call upon a different ghostly friend. Then again, Beetlejuice is undeniably more entertaining. A notable divergence from the film is the portrayal of the relationship between Beetlejuice and Lydia. In the animated series, Beetlejuice transitions from being a malevolent specter to a lovable anti-hero with a knack for getting into trouble. He's akin to that one friend who's perpetually causing mischief, but somehow always manages to charm their way out of it. Also, I've always found it both awkward and endearing that in the cartoon, Beetlejuice affectionately referred to Lydia as babes. It struck me as a bit odd, but it never felt romantic. They were just the best of friends sharing a love for wild adventure. Another quirky tidbit from the show is that Beetlejuice occasionally goes by the nickname BJ. You can't help but think that someone behind the scenes knew exactly what they were doing with that one. A cheeky little nod for the adults watching along. But yes, in the animated series, Beetlejuice sometimes goes by BJ, adding another layer of humor to the mix. Lydia, conversely, is depicted as an astute and resourceful girl who often finds herself bailing Beetlejuice out of his self-created predicaments. Yes, you read that correctly rescuing Beetlejuice. This dynamic infuses the series with a lighter, more comedic tone, making it particularly appealing to a younger audience. You'd be free as a bat! As cool as the abominable Snoopies! It's reminiscent of a supernatural version of the odd couple, with Lydia playing the sensible role and Beetlejuice embodying chaos incarnate. Their escapades not only provide endless amusement, but also impart valuable lessons about friendship, bravery, and occasionally, 
How to handle a prank that involves transforming your school principal into a giant poultry. The Animated Legacy. The Beetlejuice animated series was a delightful extension of the film, capturing its spirit while forging a distinctive and engaging narrative. It was a realm where the afterlife was far from boring, and the living had their share of supernatural excitement, all wrapped in that unmistakable Tim Burton flair. The series not only brought joy and laughter, but also expanded the Beetlejuice lore, giving fans a deeper dive into the eccentricities of the netherworld and the peculiar friendship between a goth girl and her ghostly best friend. Voice acting, infusing characters with life and spirit. The magnetic appeal of Beetlejuice the Animated Series is largely thanks to its exceptional voice acting, which breathed life into its colorful cast of characters. Stephen Wiemet, the voice behind Beetlejuice, injected the character with a frenetic energy and mischievous spirit that was both captivating and infectious. His portrayal of the Anarchic Spectre was an auditory roller coaster, perfectly capturing Beetlejuice's zany unpredictability and relentless trickery. Imagine trying to match Beetlejuice's rapid-fire jests and ceaseless antics. Wamet made it sound delightfully effortless. It was almost as if he had a direct hotline to the neither world, channeling Beetlejuice's essence with uncanny authenticity. Meanwhile, Allison Court voiced Lydia Dietz, bringing a blend of depth and relatability to the character. Her performance resonated strongly with audiences, particularly those who saw a reflection of their own eccentricities in Lydia's goth persona. Court's voice work added nuance to Lydia, transforming her from merely Beetlejuice's sidekick into a fully realized character with her own strengths and vulnerabilities. Together, Wamet and Court's dynamic interactions created a vibrant chemistry, making the supernatural and mortal realms seamlessly coexist. They were akin to a supernatural version of Abbott and Costello. If Abbott was a macabre-loving teenager and Costello was a mischievous ghost, new characters and world-building, enriching the neither world. One of the series' most enchanting aspects was its introduction of a plethora of new characters, each more whimsical than the last. These additions expanded the neither world into a lively, bustling universe teeming with peculiarities and charm. Take for example Jacques Lalan, a French skeleton bodybuilder who, despite his lack of flesh, remained obsessed with maintaining his physique. I'm a skeleton. His exaggerated French yourself? accent and dedication to fitness were both humorous <laughs> and endearing. Shock. Who would have thought that even in the afterlife one could be a fitness fanatic? It's as if the creators pondered, what's missing from this ghostly realm? Ah yes, a French accented muscle loving skeleton. Another delightful character was Ginger, a tap dancing spider whose nimble legs and rhythmic moves added a whimsical flair to the series. The sight of a spider clad in tap shoes and performing intricate dance routines was both absurd and delightful, showcasing the show's knack for blending the bizarre with the comical. These characters, along with many others, enriched the show's narrative tapestry, transforming the neither world into a fantastical playground where the extraordinary was the norm. The creative team's boundless imagination resulted in a world where even the most outlandish concepts felt perfectly at home. The art and animation style a distinctive visual journey. The animation style of Beetlejuice the Animated Series was a distinctive visual experience, mirroring Tim Burton's unique aesthetic. The character designs were exaggerated and surreal, capturing the essence of Burton's gothic whimsy. Characters with their peculiar proportions and expressive features stood out in a world of more conventional cartoons from that era. Each frame was a testament to the animator's creativity and artistry, successfully bringing an element of the bizarre into every scene. The bold use of colors and imaginative settings further amplified the show's visual allure. The neither world with its twisted landscapes and whimsical architecture was a realm where the extraordinary was routine. The show's ability to blend the eerie with the whimsical created a visually mesmerizing experience that kept viewers enthralled. It was as though the animators had taken a glimpse into Tim Burton's sketchpad and animated his doodles, crafting a world that was both enchanting and slightly unsettling. Furthermore, Beetlejuice the Animated Series was a masterpiece of voice acting, character development, and visual creativity. Its unique charm lay in its ability to blend humor with the macabre, resulting in a series that was both entertaining and unforgettable. Whether through the pitch-perfect performances of its voice actors, the introduction of delightfully quirky new characters, or its distinctive animation style, the series left a lasting impression on its viewers.
Hands, hair, and just about anything in this crazy netherworld of ours. Bon bon. <laughs> the cultural impact and reception, from goth vibes to Saturday morning staples. When Beetlejuice the animated series hit the airwaves, it made an immediate splash, resonating with a broad spectrum of viewers. Critics and audiences alike praised it for its ingenuity, humor, and sheer originality. The show's creators masterfully tapped into the rising goth subculture of the late 80s and early 90s, infusing the series with a dark yet playful aesthetic that appealed to children and teens alike. Who knew that a mischievous ghost and his goth sidekick could become cultural icons? It was like the show handed out honorary goth memberships with every episode. The series quickly became a beloved staple of Saturday morning cartoons, a time slot reserved for the creme de la creme of children's programming. Kids couldn't get enough of Beetlejuice's shenanigans and Lydia's relatable quirks. It wasn't just a show, it was an experience. Imagine sitting in front of the TV with a bowl of cereal eagerly awaiting the next wild adventure in the neither world. Parents might have scratched their heads at the zany antics, but kids understood the magic. The show's unique blend of the spooky and the silly made it a hit, fostering a loyal fan base that has endured through the years. Awards and recognition, Emmy-winning ectoplasm excellence, Beetlejuice the animated series didn't just capture hearts, it captured accolades too. The series garnered significant acclaim, culminating in a daytime Emmy award for outstanding animated program. This was a testament to its exceptional quality and widespread popularity. Winning an Emmy is no small feat, even for a ghost. The recognition underscored the show's deft balance of dark humor and kid-friendly content, a combination that set it apart in a crowded field of animated television. The series' ability to blend eerie elements with lighthearted humor was like walking a tightrope made of cobwebs, delicate but oh-so-thrilling. Critics praised the show for its clever writing, imaginative plots, and memorable characters. The daytime Emmy was like the cherry on top of a spectral sundae, affirming that Beetlejuice the animated series was more than just a commercial success, it was a critical darling too. It's almost as if the Emmy voters had to say Beetlejuice three times to summon the courage to give it the award. Merchandising and Legacy? From Toys to Timelessness The runaway success of Beetlejuice the Animated Series naturally led to a treasure trove of merchandise, ensuring that fans could carry a piece of the neither world into their everyday lives. Action figures, lunchboxes, comic books, you name it, they had it. These products kept Beetlejuice and Lydia in the public eye long after the final episode aired. Imagine the delight of children opening their lunchboxes to find Beetlejuice staring back at them ready to stir up some lunchtime mischief. The series' influence extended beyond just toys and trinkets. It played a pivotal role in cementing the Beetlejuice franchise's enduring legacy. The animated series kept the brand alive and kicking, influencing subsequent adaptations and ensuring that Beetlejuice remained a beloved character for generations to come. It's like the series cast a spell of immortality over the franchise, ensuring that the ghost with the most would never be forgotten. The conclusion of the series and its ongoing influence Beetlejuice's Afterlife Legacy Beetlejuice the animated series wrapped up its run in 1991 after captivating audiences with four wonderfully spooky seasons and an impressive tally of 94 episodes. Yet much like its titular character, the series has never truly disappeared. It retains a cherished place in the hearts of its devoted fans who nostalgically recall the days when Beetlejuice's antics and Lydia's gothic charm were a mainstay of their Saturday mornings. The legacy of the series is palpable across various forms of media and popular culture, where it remains a touchstone and an enduring part of Tim Burton's creative universe. Although the series concluded, the spirit of Beetlejuice the animated series lives on, particularly through the character of Beetlejuice himself. With his mischievous nature and carefree attitude, Beetlejuice has become an iconic figure in the realm of supernatural comedy. Whether he's making cameo appearances in contemporary Burton projects or inspiring Halloween costumes, Beetlejuice remains a vibrant part of the cultural tapestry. It's as though he's the ghost who's never quite ready to rest in peace, perpetually up to his old tricks and always ready to entertain. Aesthetic innovations, visual splendor in the neither world. The series was groundbreaking in its visual presentation, capturing the quirky and imaginative style of Tim Burton. The character designs were wonderfully exaggerated and surreal, creating a distinctive look that set the series apart from its contemporaries. Beetlejuice's wild, unruly hair and signature striped suit, alongside Lydia's dramatic gothic ensemble, were just a few examples of the show's unique aesthetic. The settings were equally inventive, 
transforming ordinary locales into fantastical realms teeming with bizarre and whimsical details. It was as if the animators had taken a deep dive into Burton's creative mind and brought his eccentric visions to life on the small screen. This unique visual style was not merely a backdrop, but a vital component of the show's identity. In contrast to other animated series of the era, Beetlejuice the animated series embraced its distinctiveness, and this bold choice resonated with audiences. The imaginative artwork captivated viewers, making each episode a visual delight. Watching the series felt like stepping into a Tim Burton dreamscape, endlessly fascinating and delightfully peculiar. The show's innovative art style played a crucial role in its long-lasting appeal, ensuring that it remains a standout in the annals of animated television. Music and sound design, the sonic magic of the neither world. Another key element that contributed to the series' charm was its music and sound design. The show featured a memorable soundtrack that perfectly captured its whimsical and eerie atmosphere. The music, composed by the talented Danny Elfman, who also scored the original Beetlejuice film, added an enchanting layer to the series. Elfman's compositions were a delightful blend of the macabre and the whimsical, enhancing the show's unique tone and making each episode feel like a gothic carnival. The sound effects were equally essential in crafting the show's distinctive ambiance. From Beetlejuice's infectious cackles to the quirky sounds of the neither world, every auditory element was meticulously designed to enhance the viewing experience. The sound designers seemed to wield their own kind of magic, creating an auditory landscape that was as engaging as the visuals. The combination of Elfman's captivating score and the meticulous sound effects made the series an immersive journey into the fantastical world of Beetlejuice. Conclusion The everlasting charm of Beetlejuice the animated series. For me, Beetlejuice was always more than just a show. It was an experience. As a kid, I was enchanted by the bizarre and whimsical neither world, a place where the strange and spooky felt oddly comforting. The show's quirky humor and imaginative plots were a delightful escape from the mundane. I remember being captivated by the eerie yet enchanting music, the quirky characters, and the way every episode felt like stepping into a Tim Burton dreamscape. It wasn't just about the gags and ghostly pranks. It was about a world where creativity knew no bounds. So what about you? What's your most vivid memory of Beetlejuice? Was it the catchy theme song? The Outlandish Adventures? Or perhaps a specific episode that left a lasting impression? I'd love to hear your stories and favorite moments. If you're as nostalgic as I am or curious to rediscover the magic, let's keep the conversation going. And hey, if you're enjoying these trips down memory lane, don't forget to subscribe to The Cabin. Together we can keep the spirit of these beloved classics alive and buzzing. Just like Beetlejuice himself. Say it three times. And let's dive back in and get ready for Beetlejuice 2.